Johan Erasmus is 24 jaar geleden op de Spets geboren. Rassie is even thuis op flank en achtste man en is een van die groot fondse van die seizoen. Hij hou van Dion Schuster's missie en als hij een kansie krijgt, pas hij er rond de golf in. Baie gewild onder sy spanmaats en een van die beste spelers in die 1997 bank van Karibeker final. against scrum offense by Burens have gathered their defenses now South Africa need to move the weight perfectionally and they'll be over for the try they're over the goal line now they're just trying to carry the ball over where's the ball it's down it's a try the crowd uh, don't like it but the French crowd always pretty vociferous now who are you going to give that try to it looked, it looked to me between uh, Johan Erasmus and Wayne Fivey you and uh, much better controlled Again, good defense by the French Barbarians. The crowd obviously not very, very happy, but that's a clear try. Let's see, there goes Rossi. He puts it down. Try by Johan Erasmus. Hannes Stratum gets his hand onto it. So does Theo Westeisen. Here we see from the reverse angle. But he's talking to the guys all the time, trying to get rid of one of the Frenchies. He's a real little general there. Look Guys the working work towards Mears the line, Dickie well. Mears in there. Down they go, across the line, and the referee right there. The squad is 24-year-old Free State flanker Rossi Erasmus, who also represented South Africa in the 96 Argentina, France and Wales tour. Of, of Naka, wat 25 of 26 is. So I think that they did not get it. And I think it's not too slecht to play in Super 12. But the other man, I think, is for himself. The other, is under the 11, is under the Bear. No, it's just my blood to the end, because the 11 always together. But I think the biggest story is that we're still young. You know, that's the fact that we're now together, that we're all very young. I was not quite in the beginning of the Spanish, but the first two days, we're very good at clicking, and there was really no problem. I think you're going to get it. An untidy that uh, this is a chance here for Jus van der Wees. Inside to Erasmus brilliantly. Erasmus! Erasmus has got that touchdown. Brilliant by Just van der Wees and a very untidy line out for the Wallabies. Yeah, slow the line stand back, daddy the Australianers. And Joost van der Westhuizen, what a great finish on that last ball was. Come on, look there. Joost van der Westhuizen stands over the line. He is standing up there. Tell the ball beautifully up. And Rassie Erasmus, what there is. And he had enough speed to get over the line. But it's interesting to see that Joost van der Westhuizen over the line stands. To get more speed on the schakelpaar to place. Van der West has a long pass to Honeyball, Muir, quickly to Terry Tosh, when Andre Fenter is there, Van der West has a lovely little touch through the legs, Mark Andrews, Van der West has a, Erasmus gives chase, and so does Justin Swart, he got a hand to it, and Erasmus will get the try, lovely following up there by Johan Erasmus, and he gets his second try in Test Rugby. 
was what's a little touch there by Van der Veer and Johanna Rasmus just in swat didn't get a hand to it just a lucky rather to get that boot to it and Johanna Rasmus followed up very nicely Landy to feed the line out and Crane Auto did very well. Garvey to run. The two front rankers working nicely together. Front of their stays and Honeyball. Now oh, Henry Honeyball Rillers in the Italian defence was up very flat. This is front of their stays. Johanna Rasmus will get his second try of the afternoon. Beautiful running from the free state flanker. Well, opportunism got that try, and I'm sure that uh, that will settle a few nerves because the Springboks really haven't done too well in the previous phase. And again, US one of our days and showing that flaring pace. He's passed the first man. He's drawn the last line of defence. That was Robert Zolo, who'd only just come on. And uh, Rassi Erasmus, very pacey, but uh, I don't think that uh, the Italians knew what hit them there. And... Uh, They're holding and trying to turn. Watch for the pickup by Teichmann. But uh, Swanepoel got it away to De Beer. De Beer, a clean through, and it's a try for Erasmus. The flag forward in support of his stand-up half. It looked so simple. There was a huge gap for De Beer. It's 12-3. Yeah, she felt this try was inevitable with it coming, and South Africa getting in this position, they're not going to miss up or pass up this position um, try scoring opportunity. Here we see Swanepoel just moving the ball out, Dick Muir coming back on the inside, De Beer almost getting there, but Erasmus in support, and a simple try in its effectiveness. And did you see the pass gathered in by this lad of Johan Erasmus? of the Orange Free State and only a sixth international. He took a ball behind him with probably three fingers at the last Good work there at the line out by South Africa. Malaj Andre Fenta and this is a chance here yeah, as they get it away as Yuri Erasmus. Erasmus got the touchdown. Het was erbij goed uitgewerkt. De drie om zijn eerste kort lijnstand te zien. En toen hij plannen in het middenveld weer lijnstand bezet. Pieter moet er geen terug van André Vinter. Prachtige opvolgwerk. Daar die Frank Smit. André Sneijman. Geen zijn zelfzuchtig. Nu hij geeft die bal via Erasmus. En Erasmus druk zijn drie. And at that pace, in fact, a beautiful pop pass in here. Frank Smith's done really well. Look at this pass from Andre Sneijman over the top. And a great support play by the South Africans. South Africa crash on from the penalty. Swanepoel, Drotsky had a couple of men on his outside, but Swanepoel should get again. Gets it away to Aitken, and then I said Erasmus didn't have a try, but now he has one as well. Running out of paper, will he? Nay, los gemaal, tweede fase het gekom. Na strafkop wat gegees, dier meteen wel is. Dan het een loskram ontwikkel, weer eens na die steelkant gespeel. En Johan Erasmus, hy druk ook sy drie vanavond. It's a bit too far. Back for it is Teichmann. Nicely taken. He's got a bit of space. Gets past O'Kinnigan. Then past O'Kelly. But not past his opposite skipper. Now it's picked up by Skinstad. Crano Otto in close attention. Van der Vesthazen. That's a good little probe. Because Montgomery has given chase. Conor O'Shea is there. But Montgomery goes too high. Then Trotsky. Quickly on to Van der Vesthazen. Now Peter Rousseau. And there's an opening. Erasmus could go over under the boat here. Erasmus, he's done it! It wees you how good it is in the South African span. Very hard to get up. Here can't he go. The ball is going to be taken. 
En het was al reeds onkant geweest, een strafskop. En prachtig zien. Rassi Erasmus die gapen. En hij heeft genoeg spoed. En het meisje net in die Zuid-Afrikaanse span. Hulle kan baie druk absorberen. Maar als je kans om voordoen, dan gebruik hulle dit. En hulle druk dan de eerste drie van die wedstrijd. Na Kadroski ook baie goed gedoen. Baie vanaf bij die afbreekpunt. Hulle wen in die tweede fase bal. En Rassi Erasmus, daar zien ons. Hij heeft genoeg spoed. Nee. Lays it back. Ruben Thorne was trying to grab it. Now it's Fenta, Erasmus, Williams. Chester Williams is going to ground. That's not a bad move by him just to set it up again. Swanapool, Kuhn. There's not an awful lot on on the outside. Billy Mayers on the wing. He sets it up well for the Cats. That's good ball for Tinas Delport. And can he find his days? And he does so, but good cover by Canterbury. Williams, Kuhn, Fenter. Swanapool again. This is force. Do a little skip for Esther Hazen. Once again, the Crusaders strong on defence. Force over again. Erasmus, captain's try. That's the bonus point. Andre Force and Johan Erasmus are having tremendous games. And Andre Fenter was also barging in there to set it up. Yes, yeah, sterling work. The ball kept in hand. No panicking. Even Vilima out on the wing. Lovely stuff. Henny LaRue was involved there. No panic stuff. Tennis Delport doing nicely. You've just got to mention everybody here. It's an all-out cat's effort. Grant Estazen getting the ball back. Now, quick stuff here. And Johanna Rasmus not going to be stopped there with a good five meters of try line ahead of him. Yeah, Caleb Ralph had no chance here. Much smaller man. And uh, Erasmus delighted with the effort of, of, I'm sure, his entire team, as you so rightly said, Guy. Yeah, it was total team effort there, and I think uh, for... They're burrowing in, Powell gets the ball. Simba. Barnard. MJ Smith sets it up in the middle of the field. They can go left, they can go right. They opt for right. Simba setting it up again. Birkus with the ball. Fenter in support. Last Skulls picks it up. Start sniffing for the line. Hands off, advantage! Simba in the middle of the field. Does the dummy. Is he through the gap? No, but it's Alba. Yes! Well, John, well, Simba came on for three minutes and we've seen action. He's been nippy. He's made things happen. He's been involved. And he's put over Rassi Rasmus, who looks as if he's getting back to his best form. Let me see it again. Paul. Out to Simba and watch how Simba stays on his feet. He keeps two of the uh, Northern's defenders. The feet to Erasmus. I think Erasmus' success was he came on at speed, even though his body height wasn't wasn't really low, and his momentum carried him over. There we see him. Great try, and 10 out of 10 for Simba, who has made a tremendous difference here this afternoon. Well, he's had four touches of the ball. And every... Dispatch in the Eastern Cape is a small town rich in rugby tradition and one of its most famous sons is Rassi Erasmus. We visited him at his home in Bloemfontein to get to know Rassi, the man. Rassi, why rugby? Did you always want to play this game professionally or did it just happen? Yeah, I didn't think uh, when I started playing out then I, I wanted to play professionally because there wasn't, there wasn't professional rugby at that stage. I always wanted to play rugby because I'm from the Spats and uh, it's, a, it's a rugby town, everybody plays rugby there. My, my parents, you know, my folks and my sisters, we're not a sporting family. Uh, my mother played a little bit of netball, but not big. And uh, I just, I think I was lucky enough to grow up next to, to put in Davi Iman and Herman Iman, Sigi Iman, you know, those brothers. They stayed next to us for 12 years, so, you know, they were rugby players. And I always wanted to be like them and play like them. And they really taught me a lot. And about 100 yards up in the road, uh, Philly Mayer stayed there. And, across the street from him, Donny Gabbard's uh, grandmother stayed there. So we were in uh, Rugby Street, and I think that's where it all started. So it was Dispatch. Who would have had a big influence on your career? Oh, there's, there's a lot of guys in Dispatch. You know, I was from, when I started out of Dispatch, I was first pool boy there at the club. Later on, when I got to Varsity, I was a barman there. So I always was at the Dispatch Rugby Club, involved with them. Now, 
uh, ran up with the sand when the guys kicked posts, stuff like that. But I must say there's a guy, I mean, you can say poor to him, but all those guys, obviously my folks, but there's a guy, Gideon van Rensburg, that, that came to my mom, I think, staying at eight, and he said, listen, do you want your son to play rugby well? And he'll take me to gym, and he'll eat in the mornings at five, we'll, we'll start jogging, and, and he really got me into, you know, give it a 100% go and see where you get. And I think four or five years ago, when I first played Springbok, I, he's the first guy I went to and said, listen, Gideon, thanks a lot. Uh, I think you started and planted the seed that, that went on from there. How do you feel about the supporters? Yeah, I'm, I must say, now when I was injured this last uh, month, two months, you know, when the guys were playing overseas, uh, you, you get to grip with how the supporters feel, because normally we're playing and you think, how, how can they be so harsh? You know, how can they say that? But now being a supporter and sitting here, not being involved with, with Harry's plans and the way that he's playing, and, it's also difficult for me to understand sometimes what they are doing and why they're doing that and how they're five yards from the line, why they're doing that specific thing. So I can, I can, I can understand where the supporters are coming from and I think we're the national team, are, we're, not, we're, we're the supporters, we're not, we're not, we're not privileged, to, we are privileged to be there. You know? uh, whenever we go out there, we must give 100%. Uh, even my weekends and, 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 and weeks were buggered up because the Springboks didn't win on Saturday, so I think we owe them a lot. What advice or warnings would you have for a young guy who wants to be a professional rugby player? Well, I, I learned that the specific thing this year, you know. I thought that rugby was everything. I thought uh, if you were getting 100% at rugby, rugby is a very honest job and uh, rugby will, in the, long in the long term, rugby will turn around and will look after you. But uh, unfortunately, rugby are run by people and people make mistakes and people differ, differ from one another because I think that the, the game is a really, really genuine game and it will, at the end, it will be fair to you. But unfortunately, it doesn't always work like that. I think, don't think if you're a great rugby player. I was lucky. I played six, seven years. Um, I did have a few injuries, not big injuries, but um, I have a big one now. I'm not in the Springbok side. I think if this happened to me three or four years ago, I would have been in trouble. But I was lucky that that didn't happen to me. That only happened to me now. So you know, I'm, uh, everything is planned. Everything is working out. But I think that it happened three or four years ago. I would have been in trouble. And that's that's my warning. Don't think it's going to be just sunshine and roses. It's going to be difficult times, and it, rugby might throw you off the trails. You know. Rusty, you're still in your twenties, uh, but rugby is going to stop. What are your plans? Uh, farming, perhaps. Uh, I don't think I'll go farming because I, I don't have that experience for farming. I, I love being between animals, but I don't have that farming experience. A big mate of my sucky vessel is about 70 k's from here. Uh, we have a few cattle that's there on his farm and you know he's running them for me. It's more as a, a hobby at this stage. It isn't really a money-making thing. It's, you know, we don't have, like, in Texas, we just have enough to, <laughs> to go and have the dogs walk, walk around with them and stuff like that. Uh, then I've, I'm involved with a few things. I, mean, I don't have, know if I must. Uh, I just accepted a, a job at Coin Security as general manager of Freestyle. I'm starting 1st of December. And then there's little things like um, uh, I'm involved with Canon and Bloemfontein, you know, the copier company and the taxes and stuff like that. What about this analysis? Uh, it sounds like something you needed to do to improve your rugby but now it's become bigger and more important. Yeah, um, really, I think when Umpiet Kleiners must have, Umpiet actually, must be the first guy that started this. When he came in, um, Bloemfontein Free State 1996, he came with two video machines and he put them on top of one another and he started analyzing and taking out tapes and he would sit there from eight, we'll train and then we'll go back there till nine in the evening. You know, he'll just analyze and, and I caught up with that because I really think that improved my game, you know, and, I, and we started sitting there. They, they used to call us square eyes because they said we'll get square eyes after a while. And the, I never get bored by doing that, you know, and after my game definitely improved, you know. If you sit there and you analyze the guys you're playing against and your own game, you get into a situation, there's a scrum five yards from your try line, you, you go down at flank, you can just see in other guys' eyes in the, the way they line up, this is move is coming, or this guy is going to do this, or this guy just steps off the left foot, or we started analyzing refs, me and Umpia, in 98. We started going into referees, and we know this guy is going to let this go, and this guy is going to do this. So it helped us. And I'm not saying me or Umpia did it, but I think that's a big part of, 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 of the free state game. This time, it's uh, to Gerry Britz. And they stake on their feet well are the, the uh, cheaters, and they've scored. Well, it was a well-controlled drive there by the Cheetahs. Good take by Brits. 
And it looked like the captain, Rassi Erasmus, on the score sheet. But it all started from the throw from David Britz. Harry Britz catches it, gets it to the back. From the right line. line. Down the ball, stay down. Here goes stay the down. shove. Erasmus holding it in the back. No, it's still on. have done very well. Stay down, number six. Stay down. Stay down. Now they've gone round, so they've got to play it. They've got it, and Erasmus has got the try. Well. Great scrum that by the cheaters. Look at this, just keeping the momentum going. Can the Lions stop this sort of momentum? Erasmus. Can't stop that. Try number three for the cheaters. Well, so simple, really. Well controlled, well executed. The Lions, one man off the field. It was always going to be mission impossible. Front row, the second row, did their jobs. Rassi controlled it at the back, controlled it well. Perfect timing to pick it up and dot it down. And nothing that the Lions can do about it. Well, with the advent of Gabani Bobo, it's six reserves on now for the Lions. Some political so chicanery about how he ended up playing for Free State this year. Andre Markraft's name was mentioned. Michael Klaassen is using the blind Pitto. side. Anton Pitto so stepping Klaassen's on the inside. Gets to within 10 metres. This is a good oh, oh, passage of play for the Cheaters. Drotsky. The defence so far from the Eagles. An advantage now being played for the Cheaters. And it comes to Duval. That's a clever kick. And it's an easy try. Oh, that was very simply done. And Rassi Erasmus. Well, I suppose he's got ESP after playing the game for so long. But uh, he had so long to score that try. It was remarkable. Rassi Erasmus. Yes, Brilliant by Rassi Erasmus, 31 years old, numerous tests for the Springboks, well over 100 games for Free State. A little chip through, Erasmus read it like a book. No one in sight, mixed up. He saw the Australians committing the same crime. Oh, Sheikh Girant, well brought to ground, to ground by the defence, opportunity for Simba to move it wide. And here goes CJ van der Linde, Erasmus, wonderful little play there by CJ van der Linde, a big man, he cracked on the pace and gave the little flip pass to his skipper. Well, from good defence in the free state, good line out, Simba realises you got the big men waiting in the middle, van der Linde takes on three people and Rassi Rasmus obviously communicating with him, waiting for the pop pass. really the platform for this excellent try absolutely john smith maybe the pass 